should be Can't you see Were they the ones who made the rules Who to see What to do You gotta watch your step Where they play Traps for you When they're through You remember I said You've gotta get away Blah blah blah. A <laughs> little uh, additional uh, dialogue there, free yeah. of charge, <laughs> as everything is on the show. Spontaneity. We'll talk speak. later. This is the show where four of us, four guys normally, uh, talk about <laughs> talk about Thank you. pretty much nothing. More like day to day kind of stuff. Yeah. Very Seinfeld. Okay. I okay. Give, I give it away. Come to Seinfeld at the diner, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'd like to do s introduce the panel. Um, I'm your host, Jorge Bernardo, and to my left, I have Mr. Jack Albert. Hi, uh, good to see all you folks. I can't literally see you, but it's a figure of speech. Hey. But they can see you. We also have Michael Manukian filling in for Chris Bartos. <laughs> it's good to be here. And as usual, Rob Isley. It's good to be here also. <laughs> Great. Now, normally, uh, Chris Bartos is the fourth member of Blah Blah Blah. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. But uh, we will see Chris in the near future, and uh, we will welcome him back with open arms. Um, but let's go ahead and get started with today's topic, shall we? <laughs> On today's show, we are going to talk about the carb counting craze. Two years ago, most people didn't know what a carb was. Mm -hmm. Today, everyone does, and we'll avoid them at any cost. We're also going to talk about come in out of the rain, and that's about trying our best to stay dry when it is rain and how we do that. And finally, we're going to talk about time's up or dealing with parking meters. So. Let's go ahead and get started with the uh, first topic today, carb counting craze. Now, years ago, there was uh, a thing called the Atkins diet that got started, where I guess you were supposed to eliminate carbs completely, mm -hmm. pretty much. Lots of protein. Lots yeah. of protein. Going and keratosis, I think it's called, where your body reacts by saying, oh my god, no carbs, let me shed all the fat. And the weight would just drop off. Yeah. Like, immediately. Yeah. But at least they discovered that if you just cut back, considerably on your carbs, mm -hmm. it's same effect, a similar effect. Similar effect. It's very similar to eating less. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, don't buy, I don't buy it. Also similar to eating less <laughs> fat, I mean, or I eat less protein. Yeah. Or, <laughs> but for some reason, <laughs> no, but for some reason, the country just grabbed this, this idea of cutting carbs, and, mm -hmm. and that's the way to trim down, and just has taken it to the extreme. Uh, the question I want to ask is, yeah. who, first of all, Go ahead, George. who is responsible 
for the absolute takeover with C2 Coca-Cola, Ultra Michelob mm -hmm. Light, um, you know, no carb mm -hmm. spaghetti and no Light carb bread. Mm -hmm. Who's responsible? Who's responsible? For the, just the, the enormity of the whole craze. Well, I, I, wishful thinking and, and general stupidity. <laughs> So the, so the population <laughs> in general is, huh? Yeah, people. I mean, pe the people lead and business follows. But originally, you, uh, were you looking for the name like, it, I mean, it, we say Atkinside, so it started with him, yeah. right? And then... You look like for Dr. Spock? But it took a long time yeah. for it to catch on, really. I mean, just a couple of years ago is when it really took off, I think. Yeah. So. I no, think it, after he died. Yeah, that's when it really took off. Because it, 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 it worked for him, kind of. Yeah. I mean, he's lost tremendous amount of weight in the last couple since, of years. Yeah, since yeah. it's since it untimely. Him? <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> of course he's lost weight. Are you disputing? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Thank you. Right. But how much? I wonder if he lost more or less, less weight while he was on a diet or after his death. <laughs> you know, like... Well, that's months. unfair. And that's... You want to talk about tough to market. Kill, <laughs> killing yourself as a way of losing weight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, people don't buy that. They tested it. It tested know. very poorly. People do some <laughs> drastic things these days. No, but seriously, those these these diets go in they're in fads. Like every few years there's a new one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the South Beach is another one. I don't think it's related to the, the carb count. It is related. Actually. Oh, is it? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're all related, sort of. But then when you see as I have a problem when I see seven <laughs> eleven advertising carb related diet. <laughs> Anything <laughs> diet like a seven eleven, I just don't buy. Well I mean that's the bottom <laughs> rung of it all. Yes. Yeah. It's reach seven eleven. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of the foods that are that you can get in low carb low carbs now? Pasta. You have pasta. a taste of low carb pasta. Tastes like no. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a famous show. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, know. I know it was. Mm -hmm. I was so what's the trade off? How much? That's the thing. Is like people still go to McDonald's, but the, people, the, the, the extent to which people will go nowadays to eliminate carbohydrates from their diet is ridiculous. Like bunless hamburgers. <laughs> I still haven't actually seen a bunless hamburger, and I don't want to see one. Do they really have them? Oh, like, oh yes. Would I kid about something like that? I don't know. They Maybe I would. It in lettuce, so I'll tell you what I like: veggie yeah. burgers. I don't know how they do on carbs. They have a lot of grains in them, so. Well, I, I, yeah. I went they to a place have. that had well, a veggie that's burger. That's from the low-fat era. Right, but they're still good. That's coming yeah. back. Big company. Yeah, low-fat. Yeah. No, fat, fats, fats in, carbs are out. Mm -hmm. um, I had a burger the other day, and it's and I advertised um, only uh, like two grams of carbs. I thought, how's that possible? Well, they have like a square inch of bread on the top and bottom. <laughs> Just an elbow together finger. by yeah. a toothpick. <laughs> and you have to like, no, I'm making it. It was an hors d'oeuvre. So you know what it was? It was an hors d'oeuvre. Hey, yeah. It was a French, was it say hamburger? <laughs> For George. It's the, it's the Melba Mac. <laughs> the Melba Mac. Yeah, it's Big Mac contents with Melba toast on either side. I know what, what I have to invest in now, in napkins, the paper industry. Yes. Because it's going to yeah. be very messy. So technically, fun. napkins are not low carb. No. <laughs> I got a wood I, pulp. <laughs> But, um, I, so I think the premise is that the, the, the uh, foods that have lots of carbs, if you take the carbs out of those foods, instead of just cutting back on the pasta, if you try to, like, cheat and have mm -hmm. the low carb, that's when you're really going to get, you know, taste yeah. trouble. I mean, it's... it's, it's yeah, because, no, so seriously, I had some uh, mm -hmm. low carb spaghetti or whatever, mm -hmm. and it tasted awful. Because my girlfriend, she likes, she yeah. was trying to try a low carb thing, and it, it tastes gross. Here, here's my idea of low carb spaghetti. You grab a handful of spaghetti, and then you take half of it away. You now have <laughs> low-carb spaghetti. Yeah. Guess what? That's how they do it at uh, Pop Belly. If you ask for a, a, a sandwich, low-carb, it's a, you just oh, really? call it skinny. Yeah. It has a third less carbs and, and mm -hmm. third less calories. Mm -hmm. So they just literally pull some of the bread out pour, and, and toss it. <laughs> and I guess... Do they charge you a lot less for it? No, no. It's they charge you twice as much. There, and it's there you go. It's all marketing. <laughs> I mean, it's like no, it is. It's like it's like pet it food. They they market yeah. pet food it, it, like it's so enjoyable and the finest gravy. It's like a pet gives a damn. Yeah, but have you seen no. the low carb pet food? Oh, and they have low carb, they have low fat pet food. Pretty soon they're going to have low carb, low calorie Fish plant food. Plant food. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Like, you know, my oh, azaleas yeah. are starting to get a little flabby. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. They're not standing tall. Uh, they're hanging over. Hanging over. How long do you think the uh, carb craze can last? It's, I think it's fading out. I think, really I, think I think it's I think it's fading out as of like last week. I read it's fading out. Yeah. Cause, cause I mean, the fact that 7-Eleven has it means it's on the way out. Have you seen the, have you seen the uh, commercial uh, at the movies for C2 Coke, where they're all for some reason I guess if you find a low calorie soda, mm -hmm. you get all excited and you start doing these crazy things like jumping into shopping carts and and going through the uh, aisles or something. I, you know, I, I, I might before, be like I did that before the C2. The most excited I've gotten about a low carb of uh, you know food item is. Mm, all right, I guess I'll take the low carb. You know, that's about it. It's <laughs> like, just think, th think about the panic the advertising executive who got that account had. 
<laughs> you realize there's no way you can sell this. C2, what about a regular Coke on some rocks? And then split it between two people. <laughs> That's C2. <laughs> but I've heard, I, I, I don't drink Coke, but I've heard some good things about C2. Have you tasted it? Does it taste different? Anybody who's here? It, uh, no, I haven't tasted it, but I have a strong feeling it tastes a lot like Coke with ice in it. You know what, you know what, <laughs> you know what it tastes like? Marketing. That's what it tastes, tastes like. like yeah. Marketing. Yeah. Yeah, so those poor bastards had to try to sell that. Of course, they're going to stick people in shopping carts and push them down an aisle. Okay. What else are you going to do? <laughs> the one thing we haven't talked about is have you incorporated the low-carb diet into your lifestyle? How, have I? Have you? <laughs> yeah, I just sleep. Yes, I felt more guilty while eating Raisin Bran. Because it's got high carbs? Oh, it's all like all carbs. I mean, the bran is complicated carbs. The raisins are simple carbs. Mm. That's right. That's actually good for you. I mean, I mean, both of them. The complex? I mean, in combination? Yeah, absolutely. What I do is yeah, instead of know. getting like a four ounce hamburger with a bun, I get yeah. a 12 ounce steak. That's just better, right? Yeah, no absolutely. Carbs. Yeah, yeah and a loaf of bread. Yeah. No, 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 no bread. No bread. 12 ounce steak, <laughs> big bowl of ice cream, mm -hmm. um, no mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, big steak, big bowl of ice cream, but no. Mm -hmm. Oh, the carbs and ice cream? <laughs> no, no. It's, it's really? all fat and. <laughs> oh, yeah, the sugar. <laughs> Thank goodness. You're right. No. The low carb, the no sugar There's added ice cream. Simple sugars. Yeah, well, simple I, I get that one. Yeah. So, George, right. true, true to form of the, the name of this topic, carb counting craze, not oh. carb reducing craze, I do count my carbs now. Oh. I just haven't reduced them. But <laughs> I, I, I count them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with him. Is a thousand, I, is a I, thousand I, a lot? That's what I want. <laughs> carbs <laughs> per hour or per day? <laughs> Grams of carbs. That's like a, yeah. the monthly intake of someone. <laughs> a thousand calories, a thousand. You're counting grams. A thousand is a kilogram, which is 2.2 .2 pounds. <laughs> oh, <So>. wow. <laughs> okay, maybe you have to cut yeah. back like 5%. All right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, um, our advice is go with your, uh, go with your gut. Your gut instinct. <laughs> <laughs> we have more of it later, but we'll be glad you did. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a quick break now. When we come back, we're going to talk about coming out of the rain or dealing with staying dry when it's raining. Be right back. Welcome back to Blah, Blah, Blah. We are going to pick these up now with our second topic, which is coming out of the rain or uh, trying to stay dry when, when it's raining. But before we do, I want to reintroduce uh, Michael Manukian, our special guest today. And Michael uh, is a juggler, a professional juggler, and I understand you're taking a big trip uh, here pretty soon. Uh, can you tell us about it? Sure, George. I'm going uh, cross country with Jump, which is Jugglers United to Move Places. And basically, oh. I'm doing a tour of the U.S. I'm going to juggle around my way around uh, major U.S. cities. So you're going to be juggling constantly as you're sort of walking across the, the whole country? time, the whole time. Wow, that's impressive. Very cool. Yeah. Hopefully, well, I won't get too tired out. Good luck. We are going to be uh, checking in with uh, Michael periodically on his trip with uh, uh, remote camera crews. So uh, on future shows, uh, be sure to uh, tune in for that. Should be a lot of fun. But let's go ahead and move into our second topic, which is uh, coming out of the rain. Now, what happens to me all the time is. Um, uh, there's a forecast for rain, and, and it doesn't look like it's that bad, like it's going to rain. And it's like, mm -hmm. do I want to grab my umbrella and, and bring it with me everywhere I'm going as I'm taking you know, the whole day through the city or whatever and have to carry it and probably leave it somewhere? Exactly. Or do I leave it in the car? You know? um, because whichever one I do is probably going to backfire, you know, Murphy's Law and all that. But mm -hmm. well, let me ask you guys, how, what, what, what factors involve that decision-making process for you, Rob? Um, I look at the weather report like everyone does, and if it's a summer, I don't care what the weather report says because it rains every day in the summer, like after 4 o'clock. Uh, so I always have it there. But if it's not the summer, then I go by the weather report, and if it's over 10% chance, <laughs> I like to have 10 the 10% chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So basically, it's actually hard to find. I have a collection of 10% chance uh, on my, hanging on my wall, 10% mm -hmm. chance of rain because it's very rare. Um, <laughs> but I like to have it uh, when it's raining because I, I but, but I also hate to bring it if it's not raining. Exactly. Yeah, that's, the, that's the you, mm -hmm. you can't I, win for losing. I just, <laughs> just, I think the key is just having your car. I have an umbrella in my car all the time, mm -hmm. just in case. But if you walk out of the car, but I, I usually work pretty close to my car when yeah. I'm doing a gig. So it's not an issue for you. It's as usually much. not usually not an issue. Mm -hmm. it's nice. do, you, do you ever find yourself leaving the umbrella behind or? Yes. Every time it's not raining, I forget my umbrella at a restaurant, whatever. That's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> if it's raining, you walk out, you start getting wet, you're thinking, umbrella. Right. But if it was raining when you came in and not raining when you leave, 
guess what? You just contributed to the restaurant's box o umbrellas. And right. you know what? I want to say this. Umbrellas are like a good umbrella. It's like a good pair of sunglasses. If mm -hmm. you get a good, good umbrella, you lose it right away. <laughs> you get a crappy oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, things are sticking out. Yeah, I mean, I never spend more than two or three hundred dollars on an umbrella. No, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> no. <laughs> One fifty is my limit. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. There's a little block tip for everybody out there. Mm -hmm. If you lose your umbrella, mm -hmm. you go to any local restaurant. You walk in, you say, "Excuse me, I, was I lost a black umbrella." <laughs> no, no, I, and I lost <laughs> my umbrella. Mm -hmm. And believe it at that. Don't give me any more details because they're probably not going to question you. They're just going to bring out a big box. You sift through and you find the most expensive one. There it is. The golf one. Thank you know the one that covers like half the block? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have a, I, I'm yeah, right. It's a kind of relates to what you just said there. Uh, we had left that umbrella, actually, um, uh, I did. My wife left an umbrella up at uh, a place way up in Rockville. And I don't know if I made a special trip all the way up there. I think I, w I was halfway there. So I go up to this place, ready to retrieve the umbrella from this eating mm -hmm. establishment, ready to describe it in great detail. I come in, I say, um. And the guy hands me the umbrella. It's like, <laughs> I have, like your, your name was on it. <laughs> this belongs to Rob. No, it didn't have a name on it. It yeah. was a nice, and well, I did get it for free from the charity. But even so, I wanted <laughs> it back. And this guy just wanted to cost. I said, would you have given it to anybody? You know. So anyway, that was kind of. But I had the I had the description bound to like you know the, the Nixon uh, and the handle and everything. And you got it. So that's, yeah. what, that's what counts. Yeah. You had Nixon engraved in the handle. <laughs> no, it's uh, Nixon. 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 Oh, Nixon. Nixon. Oh, oh, yeah. Nixon in the handle. <laughs> yeah. That's like Gerald Ford, Nixon, all the presidents. Because that would be a collector's <laughs> item. It <laughs> is. Okay, now right. you've got the umbrella now. Yeah. Let's say it's pouring, and you brought it, and you open it up, and you and you're doing pretty good. Okay. Uh, although sometimes it depends on how the wind is blowing. Oh, forget the wind. If it's really, really I mean, you, know, like you can't forget the wind. You only drive point. from like the waist up. Uh, yeah. 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 So you try to compensate by putting the umbrella out, like yeah. gauging which way the wind's coming from. Otherwise, it'll just go backwards. But if the wind catches it. That's pretty yeah. cool, though. It cool. still works that way. Yeah. If it's upside down, ca concave, and then you get a pool of water when you're done. That's right. Well, you can actually push it, it back in the wind and it pops back. It works That's for so you because cool. you're a juggler. It doesn't yeah. work for me. <laughs> 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 but even even if you get to your car on a day when it's really raining hard and you manage to stay pretty dry. What about getting into your car? And, and is that sometimes hard to say? Sometimes I will actually do without an umbrella just to avoid <laughs> the cross the lap pass <laughs> of the wet umbrella into the passenger side. It can be pretty brutal. It can be. It's like a shower in and of itself. Especially if you're wearing white tennis shorts. Oh, forget about it. What I do is I'll, I'll just I'll take the umbrella and I'll pull the handle in and I'll leave it open. Really? Pull the window up and just leave it that way so I don't have to close it at all. No. <laughs> What's a poor substitute for an umbrella? A trash bag. No, that's actually a good substitute. Oh, I'll take that back then. Um, I don't know, a, a net. newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> the Times? You said poor. Well, <laughs> no, well, the city, well. It's actually being used, I mean. Oh, okay. The city paper is because it's the ink. Comes off. I know. Yeah. A doggy doo doo bag. Yeah. Because it's real small. <laughs> yeah, if you open it the wrong way, you're in yeah, trouble. Yeah, it's just a used one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to. This guy on the left, right? That's good, that's good. Um, well, yeah, a, a newspaper mm -hmm. is a. Is that I don't think it's good because it kind of comes apart and it's not really going to hold up very long. Yeah, no. that's good. What's the light rain? Yeah. The light rain. It was a light. Well, it looks like they're doing something. I think people want to look like they're doing something, so they just yeah. they run yeah. around with something. Mm -hmm. you know, well, what's the what's, bug, you know? what's the what's the area of the body that you most want to protect from the getting wet? Oh, the ha your hair. Your hair? Yeah, hair. Okay. Yeah. Your head, I mean. I mean. <laughs> you want to protect his head? <laughs> George. <laughs> George. <laughs> so you're getting wet. Uh, the song we're gonna do right now is a tune called One Man Guy. This is actually written by a man named Loudon Wainwright, who was a folk singer from the 60s, Loudon Wainwright III, and his son, Rufus, who's uh, getting more popularity right now, covered it on his most recent album titled Poses. So uh, without further ado, this is One Man Guy. People know when they see this show the kind of a guy I am. They'll recognize just what I stand for and what I just can't stand. They'll perceive what I believe in and what I know is true. They'll recognize I'm a one man guy, always was through and through. People meditate. you 
Welcome back to Blah, 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 at least the segment with the four of us. We're going to um, finish up here with talking about parking meters. But first, uh, Rob, you have one more thing to say about uh, coming out of the rain? Yeah, besides the fact I thought there was a Melissa Manchester song, but probably not. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I was going to say something about umbrellas that, you know, when you, when you want to go into the metro and you have some excess rain on the umbrella and you want to get it off before you go in there and get, it, get yourself all wet with it, is how much clearance do you need to spin the umbrella? You know, like do like a troll, something like from um, a la Mary From Robbins other people walking by, like the, the wet dog shake. Yeah, wet dog shake, but with the yeah. umbrella. Yeah. I like to give at least uh, 20 feet clearance. I didn't know if that was reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> is that a diameter of 20 feet? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Radius. Let's be reasonable here. <laughs> so, I mean, does that sound good to you? Uh, that works. I'd probably go with more like 25, but I, I, I just know don't want to be... But there, are there any regulations, or like laws, regarding that? I think they're posted. It's blue laws. It's next to the, like, don't listen to Walkman, don't, don't drink <laughs> in the metro. I, alcohol. I, I, I think there's a little, <laughs> no umbrella spin zone. I think. Yeah, it's probably, it's yeah. It's okay. one of the prohibitions. I just want to the elevator. Spin zone. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the elevator. Hey, parking meters. Well, that's a nice segue to our last topic today, which is time's up for uh, dealing with parking meters. Now, I have to do a lot of parking in the city, and I use meters uh, quite a bit, actually. I, probably at least... Ten dollars worth of quarters a week. Wow. Um, really? But uh, if you've been out there trying to leave your car to to uh, rest while you go do your thing, um, a lot of lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of challenges that that come out of uh, uh, mm -hmm. parking uh, at a meter. But uh, by gum, I'm not paying for parking in a lot. But which is the first the first thing that goes through my mind is, I don't care how much it could be. I have, to, I have to come out every 20 minutes and pop in more quarters. I'm doing it because I am not paying eight bucks or 12 bucks for parking in there. Mm -hmm. Now, at what point does that become counterproductive? Almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I think when you have to pay a dollar to get another quarter, you know, that, that kind of thing. If you want to see a movie, uh, it happens. Yeah, yeah. Come out of yeah if, you're, if you're on a time frame or time schedule, mm -hmm. that, that becomes really, sometimes you get caught in the cycle where I don't pay for parking. I mean, I like to find a meter myself, too, and not a, not a parking lot because mm -hmm. they're just so exorbitant. But if you get caught, like, in a cycle, you've got to go to a job at, say, 8 or 9 o'clock, and, um, you know, you're there five minutes before, but you end up spending 15, 20 minutes <laughs> trying to find that space. <laughs> That's what I do every day. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're 15, 20 minutes late for work. Oh, yeah, but I need to get it into my trip time. Oh, see, I don't factor mm -hmm. it in. Yeah. Um, what are some, what are some, uh, some strategies? Well, some strategies, some challenges. Like, have you been up to a meter where it says fail or, or it's jammed? Those are the perfect meters. Those are, that's, like, the perfect meter. 
Ah, you would ah, think. You would think. You're still responsible, even though the meter doesn't work. Oh, so well, that's not true. But it makes sense. Because Do you see sense you're still responsible? Yeah. Do you still get ticketed? Yes. I don't, I've never gotten ticketed. Where do you leave the money? You will now. <laughs> how, you you uh, how do you leave the money? You leave a note with a, you know, I, your dollar bill. I haven't called the shitty, but I did, I did get a ticket two weeks ago for doing it, but I was, mm -hmm. I was running late, as you said, you know, and I decided to take my chances. Didn't pay off. $25 ticket. You're kidding. But there's the thing. Garage is cheaper. you got to leave it this way. If, if it said... Thanks up, Jack. If, if it was free, if it was broken, then everybody would just break them. Just break <laughs> them. Hold that's on. That's just you like jam some bubble gum in there, and then... You bubble know, gum doesn't work as well as crazy glue on a quarter. Yeah. Well, there you go. Crazy glue on everyone. So that it kind of makes sense. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Makes sense. Of course yeah. it does. That's what I was getting all do down on the man, but the man actually has a point this time. Yeah. Do you do a lot of parking on parking meters? Uh, thankfully not. Uh, I know some people who have a full-time job, and they come out every hour to feed the meter. Yeah. You know, every day, five days a week, all year, that gets pretty old. Well, oh, it yeah? does, but no. today, literally today, I found out that in Washington, they're starting to give tickets to people who can't own um, the same meter. In other words, mm -hmm. they come. You can't stay in your meter. You, you have to can't get stay more than two hours. You've right. got to change oh, right. spots. Yeah. You know, it, it, next to me, it, depen it depends on the area. Like, I park around GW sometimes, and they, are, they have that, what is it, I forget what it's called, but you can't, you can't just, be, it's called meter feeding. Yeah. And you definitely have to move, but that's the law in the books. But a lot of times they don't enforce that. Mm. Now, do you ever see somebody? Uh, this 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 kills me when the person, I see a person get out of their car and they're parked illegally, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a meter or not. Mm -hmm. They're looking around for sign. There's no sign because it's a bus stop or the bus. They're just you know. <laughs> it's a taxi it's just like meter, 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 meter. No meter. Okay. It's right. Like, it is either Ambulance. a hybrid or an entrance Ambulance or a driveway, no, hospital yeah. area. and they look around and they can't, and then they walk away. You know, and it's like they mm -hmm. come back and there's a ticket. Yeah, you know, guess what? Of course mm -hmm. you're going to get a ticket. One thing I can't stand, there's only two kinds of people. People that knowingly park illegally and then get mad when they get a ticket. Yeah. And people who don't. There's only two kinds, huh? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing about me, broken meters, I, I've suffered from broken meter optimism. I put a quarter in a meter, turn the thing, or the electronic kinds, and nothing happens. So I say, think to myself, <laughs> let me try that again and hope for a better result. And now I have two wasted quarters. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes you do put, you have, but you have to do, you have to do a double check. Because sometimes you, you put something in and it doesn't register, and you put something, you put your next one in and it registers. You're like, great, they just ripped me off a quarter. Mm -hmm. They ripped you off of the first quarter. And you got a 50% <laughs> success rate. Right. But you still got mm -hmm. to, still got to feed it. Oh, okay. You know. I, I thought I was just dumb. I was just paid DC, you know, 100 bucks annually. That's not enough, is it? No, I guess something like a thousand. No. I'm getting them all the tickets anyway. Let me tell you a little secret yeah. for parking in D.C. Yeah. If you have a, a job around the mall, mm -hmm. um, and that's to park on the mall, because you get three hours free. Oh. If you, you know, can find a spot. Yeah, now, the, spot, the spots rotate pretty good, because a, yeah. a lot of tourists, are, I mean, if it's a weekday thing, you know, there's a lot of tourism going through there, and they're okay. rotating pretty quickly. There's a lot of, you know, space on the mall. All the way up to the Lincoln Memorial, there's spaces. Mm -hmm. So you can, if you have any kind of event there, there, you can park there, and then, you know, three hours is a pretty good chunk. Of, you can push it. And if you get a ticket there, please send it to blah, 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 care of Michael Manukian. He'll be glad to pay that for you. We're all out of time, Michael. <laughs> you can read your own signs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank our special guest, Michael Manukian, for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in to blah, blah, blah. And uh, we will see you next time.